Hey, it's Scott with uh, Renegade Hybrids. <laughs> We're in our little uh, hallway that's between the shop and the main office. It's kind of a place where we have dry erase boards, lots of notes, all that sort of stuff. But we actually explore lots of engineering ideas and we finalize some stuff here too. This right here is our new cooling system for the 914 LS, a little bit different routing. Everything is all the same as far as the radiator goes and as far as the front manifold goes and our filler neck goes and things like that. But we're gonna change some of the sizes and we're gonna add a little bit different thermostat. So here we go, follow along by the flow of water. This is gonna be our remote filler neck that goes up on the firewall. This is the highest point in the entire system. This feeds one inch into the top of the water manifold that goes on front of the LS engine right here. So that's one inch right there. That's gonna be the inlet. That's gonna feed across and that will then go to inch and a quarter outlet on this, inch and a quarter inlet on this heater bypass, inch and a quarter outlet into the thermostat, and then the thermostat bypass over and the through the radiator pathway on the non-bypass. Let me explain all that. So as we come down to this, this is 5 8 into the heater. This will be backed up by the thermostat, the natural restriction is here, and it'll push it through the heater, which is nice. When the thermostat is closed, it'll push it in this bypass over into the F-log. When the thermostat then opens, because it's got hot, it's gonna push it into the top of the radiator. Notice the orientation of the shape of, the, of this thermostat assembly that's here. This will be sent to you. Most of the time we try to mark it, but if for some reason we've forgotten to do so, this right here is how it goes. And this is a nice little unit. It works excellent. And it's a true bypass, which is something I've been really wanting for a while. Once you go into the top of the radiator inch and a quarter, you're gonna come out of the bottom of the radiator inch and a quarter. You're gonna go into our F-log. This is that billet piece that allows you to be able to screw in different fittings. This will be an inch and a quarter fitting inlet. Your bypass comes across, bypasses the radiator and goes into an inch and a quarter inlet here. Your heater loop goes through the heater core. This is five eighths, goes into the F-log here. And then the outlet inch and a quarter goes into the water pump there. The water pump is no longer the two outlet style water pump. We're using the electric water pump that has a single in inch and a quarter, single in um, or single out inch and a quarter and that feeds back into the lower out of the two holes right there on the water block, which will then fill the entire engine, and that will be your continuous loop. The steam tube on the top of the engine will allow air that's trapped up in the top of the engine to go to the highest point. Again, keep in mind, this is the remote filler neck. This needs to be the highest point in the entire system. So any air that's trapped in, trapped in the top of the engine will then come up and be filled up into here and displaced out through the overflow. And in the radiator, the way you get the air out of the top of the radiator is you warm up the entire system, and then what you do is um, you shut the engine off, so everything is turned off, the water pump is turned off, and you open up the petcock, which is up here in the corner, top of the radiator, and you bleed the air off, then it will start to like bubble piss, and then after that it'll do a nice steady stream. When you see a nice steady stream, you know that you've gotten the air out of the top of the system. This is a self-bleeding style system, and as long as this is the highest point, and this is filled with coolant, about two-thirds to three-quarters, then as the system contracts, it'll pull the water back in. As it expands, any air that's trapped up in the top will automatically be pushed past the base of the cap and into the overflow, so it's a self-bleeding system. There will be some hard bleeding that you're gonna do, obviously, when you first fill the system. Here's the legend right here. The heater loop, which is right here, is gonna be 5 eighths. The coolant loop, is inch and a quarter. The bypass loop is also inch and a quarter. The filler, which is gonna be from here over to there, is gonna be one inch. And then the steam tube is gonna be that small little tiny steam tube that goes out of the top of the engine and over into the upper inlet on the base tank reservoir area. The heater control valve goes right in here if you decide to use one so that you can regulate your flow through your heater core, so anywhere in this portion of the loop feeding uh, the heater core. You can even put it afterwards if you prefer, it really doesn't matter. That's why it's not necessarily shown on the drawing. If you have any additional questions, 702-739-8011. It's Scott, it's Travis, and we're here for you, and I hope that covered everything. Thank you very much.